Thank you for uh, joining me for this session. Uh, my name is Peter Avenant. I'm a director at a company called Virgins, um, and we have a number of products. Does anybody here know the Bimmel Express product that we have, the free one? No? Yeah, a couple? Okay, great. Um, so effectively what we do is we build, um, we've got a couple of different products, but uh, the Bimmel Express one is a free utility where you can build your own sort of data automation stuff. And then we have Bimmel Flex, which, oh, hold on, I've got to click a button here. We've got Bimmel Flex here, which I'm going to show you guys uh, right now how would we do Azure Data Factory automation. Um, we only got 20 minutes, so it's going to be a little bit of a um, smoke and mirrors, but uh, I believe you, everything is real. I've got, you know, I'm not a magician, so um, I'm going to show you a couple of those things. Um, what we're going to do is I'm really going to explain to you what I'm going to do, and then we'll, we'll go for it. Um, normally, when you do a data project, um, we, I, I suppose everybody around here is in the data space, uh, you've got a couple of different challenges. You need uh, to get a lot of data in from a lot of different places. You need to bring that data in and firstly, obviously, bring it into your data space, whether that's Data Lake, uh, SQL Server, you know, all the other flavors, Synapse, you name it. Um, and you need to bring that through the different layers, right? So the, the first thing is actually what I'm going to talk to you about there is just getting data into a data lake effectively, right? And then uh, I have another session, I think, tomorrow that I'm going to show how you get the data into Databricks. Now, the, the Databricks side of things is regard, it, it could be Synapse, it could be Snowflake. The process is the same, right? You take it from that sort of landed data, the data that you just need to bring in. So you have, if you do have a requirement to bring a lot of data in from a lot of different places and you just want to do that in minutes less days instead of having a number of developers uh, and different processes, Bubbleflex could be something that you want to look into. You can come to our booth and so for that process. Now, I'm just going to warn you right now, uh, the reason I had so many people here was that the internet connection seems to be down for me. So I'm going to show you stuff that we generated. So you got to believe me. If you want to see me generated in, in person, I think downstairs I had an internet connection. So I'm going to show you some data factory stuff that I generate. I promise we did uh, generate them earlier. But um, yeah, so this is Bimble Flex, uh, which effectively is a metadata based tool, which is, if you think about data uh, processes, uh, a lot of the times is you have a lot of technical things that you need to do. Now, oh, hold on. Okay. Now, what Bimble Flex does is it kind of. Um, reduces the technical need that you need to have to be able to build Databricks, uh, Data Factory, and to build all of these things, right? We we, we're kind of targeting um, the process of using my, using my metadata and using my data models and actually just generating the code because ultimately, you know, um, the power is the data and do you really care how the data gets from A to B as long as it gets in there as quickly as possible and as, uh, and as um, securely as possible and having the right data. So the process that, um, and I guess this is a very simplified process here right now, uh, what we tend to do is you have uh, all your connections set up. Um, this is just a, a sample projects, and this one is just set up for SQL for SSIS, but we have a number of ones here for Data Factory that I'm going to go through, uh, um, not for Data, yeah, for Data Factory that I'm going to show you in a second here. But the, the process that we would go through is you would uh, set up your connection to any of your sources, Oracle, DB2, etc. Uh, you click the import metadata button, where you then go and choose which tables you're going to do. Again, I can't click connect to database here because I don't have the internet connection. But normally you would click connect to database and it would come up and show you all of your tables. And I apologize again, this is where the first part of the demo goes a bit sideways. But you would get a list of all of your tab databases and tables here that you, that you can pick from and you'd select your, your, your tables that you want. And this is one that is the after import, which then will give you, once you've imported it, it will give you a diagram, a schema diagram like this. Um, and I'll zoom in here. Effectively that you can look at, you can uh, look at your columns, et cetera. So you can also, uh, one of the things that you could do at this stage is you may have a source system or a system that has a lot of tables, but it doesn't have any foreign keys on it. So here you can go and start doing things like um, adding relationships. Now, these are metadata relationships. You can say, oh, actually, this table relates to that table, and this is the key that it relates on. My source system doesn't have that information, but I'm going to add that metadata in here. You can, all, you can add all kinds of um, additional metadata in here. Sorry, I'll just zoom in here again. Um, at this point here, you can go in here and add all kinds of metadata in here, um, you know, explanations, and, you know, you can add 
a data cleansing thing, so you can, if, if Firebase actually, if you need to do ease nulls or any kind of data transformation, you can add it right in your metadata here. So again, your metadata added. You can also do data type transformation. So if your source system is, for argument, saying an Oracle source system and you're moving this data into a data lake, you want to convert that data from maybe the, their date format into whatever your standard date format is. So we have also got things called data type mappings where you can go and set up data type mappings saying, oh, these Oracle source systems or these SQL Server source systems or whatever source system it is, their date format is this way and we want to have this date format in our Parquet file or whatever the file is. So it would do those data type transformation at a global level. So you can do some global data type conversions. And once you have all of that in, you can also view your metadata here um, where you can look at your tables, um, and you can, again, as I said, you can add, I'm not sure if you can, guys can, you, oh, it's a massive screen, so you guys can probably see it. You can do additional um, technical metadata, add additional technical metadata in it, like from statements, parameters, in other words, if you need to add, um, do high watermark parameters and saying, okay, hold on, when I load my data, it needs to go from this date, and then tomorrow it needs to go from that date, that kind of stuff. Um, and even at the column level here, you can go into any column here and, again, add technical metadata in it. You can add your, almost your business glossary information in here too. You can add all that kind of stuff. There's loads of other features that are, you know, in the time that we have, we're probably not going to be able to cover it, which is, you know, the data modeling side of things. Uh, if you're into data vault, we do a lot of data vault. If you're into business modeling, okay, uh, we can do that also. Long story short, because we are, you know, it's, uh, we are limited on time here. From this metadata, you can then go out and build all of your artifacts. So I'm going to just, uh, I'm not going to do all of that build stuff. It can be continuous integrated and put into your SQL, uh, into your GitHub, or any of those repositories that you want. One of the key differences between what our tool does and what probably all of our competitors do is all of our code that we generate, it looks exactly the same as if any of you went into the Microsoft suite and built it by hand. So the JSON files that we generate for Azure Data Factory is line for line exactly the same as if you built it by hand. Right? So if you go into Azure Data Factory and you built the Data Factory pipeline in there, and you built the Data Factory pipeline through our tool, those two files are exactly the same, the JSON file behind the scenes. So I'm going to just go into here. Now, bearing in mind that um, I don't have the Data Factory connection here, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. But this is the output from our tool. Effectively, it will build out exactly the same structure that you were building out. So if you're having a pipeline, here is the JSON file that we will do. So you check this into GitHub, you push that up, you can push it into your next branch, your next branch. The link services will be built out. Sorry, I just got stuck in my mouth there. The link services will get built out. So um, I think the... The sort of simplified message here is that we automate the entire process, but what we're doing is we're automating it using metadata, and all of the artifacts is generated for Data Factory as if it's built by hand. Our runtime, there is no runtime. So when you, let's just say you're a, a consulting company or a consultant, or, uh, and you use the product to build out a project for three months. So we all have a subscription-based model, so you could purchase a three-month subscription, build everything out, and switch the tool off. All of that code will run forever, right? So there's no runtime component. A lot of other customer or other tools, once you buy the tool, you have to have their tool to run your code. That's where we differ. We are a tool that accelerates the development process and then all the artifacts is generated. So again, I'll show you what it looks like when we're looking at Data Factory. Now, I can't click around here, by the way. Sorry, you can see that I'm not connected here. But effectively, everything here, so I wanted to show you inside of this pipeline. Unfortunately, I can't. But Every single pipeline that is built will be, it will look as, a, as if you dragged it in. The, the one other thing that I want to point out right now, if you want to come and have a, maybe a little bit more of a deep dive in how do you do this and how do you do that, um, every single thing that you see, and again, I can't click here, but anything that you see in Data Factory that you want to do, if you wanted to inject an Azure function call into our pipeline, we have something called extension points that at any point in our pipeline, you can override our copy activity. Let's say you want to do your own copy activity for whatever it is. So an extension point, you can effectively say, um, between the copy activity and this call, inject a call to 
send an email or whatever the case may be. So anything that you can do in Azure Data Factory, you can inject in it. Now the beauty of that is you can inject it into a single pipeline or you can inject the same piece of code into all your pipelines. So if you're in a company where you have a standard logging process or you have a standard thing that needs to happen, you can say this standard thing needs to happen at the beginning of every pipeline um, because that's our corporate standard. So you can inject effectively anything that you see. And again, as I said, I can't click here. Thank you. I can't click here, but effectively anything that you can do, whether it's machine learning, um, uh, effectively anything, right? You can inject in our pipeline. So it's got full parity with the entire Azure Data Factory suite. Um, and then obviously the, res the resulting code, which I, again, unfortunately can't show you, it will push it into what you will see on this side here is also built in. And these are all settings in our tool where you can say, okay, you know, I've just loaded this data into my data lake. Do I want to archive that data and keep it? In other words, either I've processed it, get rid of it, or I've processed it, save it, right? So all of that process sitting over here on this side here will do all of your archiving of files. And, and we control all of these things with settings in our tool. So you can switch a lot of behavior on and off depending on your criteria, right? So, and, uh, and also naming conventions. So if you have certain file pattern naming conventions, uh, we have customers that need to archive the data to keep it, but they need to archive it into monthly folders effectively. That's my time. Unfortunately, there's no time for questions, I believe. Um, but if you want, we're downstairs, the Verigence booth. I'm going to go there now. Um, or you can hijack me on the way out if you want, if you have got any questions. We've got a whole bunch of stuff that we need to get. I, I'm from Australia, so I can't take that stuff back. So if you want to come grab cubes or cups, please come. Thank you for your time. <laughs>